Hey guys, in this video, we'll learn what is a terminal. We'll learn what a terminal is before we start using it. Uh, and this course is presumably only for people who have a Linux based machine, which means they either have a MacBook or uh, a Linux based Ubuntu or a Red Hat Linux in operating system in their computers. I personally have never worked in a terminal in Windows, so I don't know how it works. I've worked quite a lot in Ubuntu as an undergrad and then as a grad student, I've been working with the MacBook, which is uh, the operating system in which this course is being recorded. So let's try and understand in this video what a terminal is. And to understand that, we need to understand the user interface that we actually use. We're, we've been using since uh, we were children in a Windows machine because everybody starts using a Windows machine unless you have a computer scientist uh, parent. Uh, so what a user interface does is when you say when you click on a folder in your desktop, you're basically the action of clicking is you're giving it a command. You're giving the computer a command by the action of clicking that, hey, Mr. Computer, you have to open this folder for me. So user interface is nothing but a bunch of commands that you see from your eyes, uh, given through an interface, which you can see from your eyes and you press on that. And then that's one way of giving a command. You see objects with your eyes and you choose the object that you want to uh, play with, open, uh, do things in, close, and that's how you give commands in a user interface. The terminal does exactly that, but it's it's not, you do not see it visually. Like when you see a folder in a desktop, you actually see the icon of a folder. Like there is an object that looks, that's that we're taught looks like a folder. And when you click on it, a folder opens. Now a folder is present inside the computer and in a terminal, we when we have to open a folder, let's say the we we write a command to do that instead of double clicking on the image of the folder, we just write an equivalent of saying that, "Hey, Mr. Computer, uh, open this folder for me." So an equivalent of saying that in a user interface is double clicking on the folder when you tell the computer. That Mr. Computer, you need to open this folder for me. In a terminal, you type it instead of double clicking. And that is basically what a terminal does. That was a very short introduction to a terminal. Now we'll try and look at, well, open, basically open a terminal. Let's see what a terminal looks like. So here we go. Now, this is my desktop. This is my MacBook right here. So my desktop, I don't want to show you guys my desktop because it's really filthy. It's It has a bunch of different things. And uh, so I'm just showing you my Udemy homepage, just trying to advertise myself. But uh, I mean, I didn't, I, I didn't know what else I could do. So if you have a MacBook, you just have this, icon in the menu bar it's called a terminal and the way you open open a terminal in a macbook is just click on this and a terminal opens up and if you have an ubuntu or linux ubuntu which i think most students use then i if i remember correctly you just, you just need to press control alt t control alt t if you press uh, the terminal would open up it would look something similar to this so uh, this is my terminal. So most of you, if you're opening your terminals the first time, if you've opened it a few times, your terminal looks white. I've changed the color of my terminal because that's this is how I like my terminal to look like. So uh, you can also change your color, change the color of your terminal. I'll just quickly show you how it's done. So you go to terminal and then you go to preferences. And in that, you'll see a bunch of colors coming up and you can play with the kind of color you want your terminal to look, your terminal to have. So uh, 
So basically opening a terminal is really easy. You just press the terminal button if you are in a Mac machine or a Mac OS or if you're in Ubuntu, you press Control Alt Delete. So that is it uh, for this introductory video on opening a terminal and getting to know what a terminal, trying to understand what a terminal is. And I'll see you guys again in the next video where we learn to work with the terminal. So until then, bye guys. Hey guys, welcome to this new video where we learn how to find our way inside the terminal. In the previous window, in the previous video, we tried to understand what a terminal is and how it's really similar to using a user interface that we normally use. In this video, we'll try and navigate through in a terminal. And we'll side by side work in a terminal as well. So to be able to navigate anywhere, the first thing, what's the first thing you need to do? The first thing you need to do is find where you are right now. And that's what we also do. We find where we are at the moment in a terminal. And that's before that. Yeah, before that, let's look at this thing that showed up on the screen. It's the definition of a directory. Directory is a term that I'll keep using uh, in this video and forever after that. And this uh, directory, this term directory means nothing but a folder. So every folder that you see in your desktop is, uh, is a directory. And even the desktop is a folder in your computer. So what is a directory? Directory means it's a folder. That's it. Now, navigating, back to navigating in a terminal. To find your way in a terminal, to find you navigate anywhere, you have to know where you currently are. And you do that by... In a terminal, you do that do that by printing your current directory or printing your working directory. So to know your current directory, you type in the command PWD, which means print working directory. Working directory is the same as your current directory. So let's try and do that. But before that, let's learn another command, which is called list items. So what we're doing, trying to do here is trying to gauge our surroundings. So we have to navigate through in a terminal. So what's the first thing you need to do? You need to know where you are and you need to know your surroundings. And that's what we're doing. PWD print working directory tells us the current directory that we are in and list item ls command tells us the items that are present inside a folder, like in a directory, like whatever is present inside a, say X folder in your desktop, like it's a music folder, then the files inside there are files inside uh, a music folder. There are sometimes folders inside a music folder. And if you write ls and enter in a terminal, you get a list of all those items inside a directory or a folder. So let's try this out. So I'll start by opening the terminal from scratch. And here is a side-by-side -side view of the user interface of the directories that I'll be navigating in in the terminal or through the terminal. So let me expand this and yep, let's go. We're, we have opened the terminal and now I want to know where I am. To do that, I print PWD, which means print working directory. And this is where I am. I'm at users Manju Gupta. So that's the name of my laptop. Uh, and let's see what files are present in this directory and to do that I write ls and that's the files these are the files that are present and you can see that this is exactly what this uh, folder called Manju Gupta contains so here it is Manju Gupta here it is Manju Gupta on the top and these are exactly the folders that are present in this folder and ls printed all those items for me. So that's what list item does. Now, now you found your, to find, to start navigating, you know where you are and you know your surroundings. Now you need to start moving. Let's see how we do that. So to start moving, 
what we have to do is we have to go to a different directory, right? If you are in a car, if let's say you open your desktop and you want to open a music folder, what do you do? You double click on the folder's name, right? And that's how you navigate. You double double clicking on a folder means you're giving your computer a command. So you basically give your computer a command to do something. And in nav when you navigate, you want to change your directory in a terminal. And you do this by using uh, the command change directory written by CD. And after that, you write the name of the directory that you want to go into. And when you press enter, you're magically in that new directory. So let's do all this. Let's try and navigate uh, through a folder I want you guys to navigate to in my computer. So what I so there's a folder called some the name of the course, but right now I'm just calling it terminal. So there's a folder I want to reach, and what I did was I opened the terminal, I gauged where I was, entered pwd ls. This is where I am. Now I want to go to the term to the folder desktop. So what I do, I write cd space the name of the folder. cd space desktop takes me to the folder. Now, I don't want to press ls here because it's going to be crazy because my desktop is really filthy, but I guess I'll just do that. Let's gauge the environment. I type ls and there is a bunch of different things that are listed. I type ls, there are a bunch of different things going on here. So let me clear this. pwd is I'm in the desktop directory. So there's a bunch of different things going on. I want to go in the coding folder and in the desktop. So I type CD coding. Now I'm in the coding folder. Yes, I am. Now I want to go into this folder called terminal. So I want to go to the folder called terminal and let's go to the folder called terminal. I type CD terminal. And now I'm in the folder terminal. You can check this by typing pwd print working directory. And now you're in a folder terminal inside the folder coding inside the folder desktop. And this is what we did. So this is basically where we are right now. It has two files. It, it has a presentation and it, is, it has a video called what is a terminal. And if I type ls here, this is what it should display, right? Because the folder terminal has just two files, and this is where I am in my in my terminal. And when I type ls, it does show only two files and exactly the files that are present here. So this was the first our first attempt to navigate in a terminal, and in and this is it for this video. Just trying to begin our navigation process. In the next video, we'll look at manipulating, creating folders, or going back and forth in a directory using a terminal. So uh, that's it for this video, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye. Hey guys, what is up? In this video, we'll still we're still navigating in a terminal, and we'll try and build on what we did. Last time, the three commands that we learned last time were pwd, ls, and cd. pwd means print working directory. ls means list, basically just list. cd means create, or sorry, change directory. cd means to change directory. Now, uh, what this helps us to do is gauge our surroundings. So pwd grounds us, it tells us which directory we're in. List ls tells us what's the surroundings like, what different items are present in our current directory, in our current folder. And cd change directory takes us to a folder we want to visit. So uh, let's uh, go and just try and improvise on these things before we learn new things. So I'm going to start again by opening my terminal. So whenever you open your terminal, you're uh, in the users folder. So the users folder is 
the folder that comes uh, that that is the parent directory to the uh, to everything in your computer basically so when you uh, open your terminal you're always in the users folder and you can uh, see that using when you type pwd you're in users manjugupta so this is the user i'm in remember when you uh, open your computer and you uh, it tells you the user name and then you type in a password and then it allows you to go in uh, open uh, uh, your computer that's how your computer opens so that is basically one user sometimes you have a user and a guest user so if it was a guest user it would say users slash guest but right now i'm in uh, a user whose name is manjur gupta so that's why it's uh, in this directory and this is how it opens a terminal opens naturally so you're in pwd so sorry you're, you're in the users folder and now i want to navigate to the folder that we were earlier at uh, which is the terminal and that was present in the desktop so i first need to uh, go to the desktop and to do that i use change directory cd and then i type in desktop um uh, and now i basically know where i'm going in so i can actually type in the complete path i type in desktop coding sorry i think uh yeah so this slash so you type cd desktop slash coding slash terminal this is where i want to go into so i basically type the whole path and i press enter and this is where i am this tells me that i'm in the folder called terminal and and uh, this is the user inter user interface of the uh, terminal folder it has three files now and if i press ls list it has three files now and these are exactly the same as these three files so this is basically what we learned the last in the last video so uh what if you want to go all the way so this is the next thing that we're trying going to try to try to do what if you want to go back all the way to the home directory like the user users directory where you where it all began like this directory how do you do that you just enter cd you enter cd and uh, so basically right now you're in this directory users slash manjugupta this is the user you're working in and then desktop coding terminal this is where you're at if you type just cd just change directory it takes you all the way back to the users directory if you type in pwd it says exactly user slash manjugupta which is where we started so just typing cd and entering will take you all the way back to where it all began so let's try and go back to um, the directory which i like to call terminal and we are here so let's try let's learn something new today let's learn how to create a directory or create a folder inside a terminal by the way i keep using this command called clear it clears up the terminal face if i write clear and enter it clears the terminal uh, and i'm still in a folder called terminal uh, yeah, so let's learn how to create a directory. We create a directory by uh, the command called mkdir followed by the name of the directory. So that basically make that basically stands for make directory. So mkdir uh, followed by the name of the directory. Let's try it out. Okay, so I'm in the terminal folder. It has three files confirming ls pwd. It's a folder in the coding folder which is present in the desktop now i want to create a folder and you'll see magic happening a uh, folder uh, will automatically pop up here i want to create a directory and i want to call this directory uh, my uh, directory and the directory is called testing ground mkdi and the directory is called testing ground and you see a, a folder magically appears in the folder terminal it's called testing ground now let's go to this folder called testing ground and you say cd and the name of the folder change directory to testing ground enter now you're in testing ground just um, you can check this by using pwd you're in testing ground there's no file inside testing ground so when you type ls nothing shows up 
So you've made a directory, you've started to navigate through directories. Now let's say you now you know how to go inside a directory and now then go further inside and then keep further going inside. But how do you come out? I mean, you could do one thing is you just type CD, enter, and you go all the way back. But what if you want to go to the previous directory? You do that by typing CD space double dot. If you type CD space double dot, you go back to the previous directory. So right now you're in testing ground, terminal SAS slash testing ground. And then if you do CD space double dot enter, now you're in the directory terminal, which is the parent directory of testing ground. Check this by pressing PWD. This is where you are. So CD double dot space double dot enter takes you back to the previous directory. Now we'll this is this is it for this video. We've learned a bit more about navigating through the terminal creating folders. So who would have thought you'd be creating folders using terminals rather than right clicking and clicking on the option of new folder because this is exactly what you do here. This is exactly what you do here just by entering a command rather than clicking on a command. So this is it for this video guys. Come back again in the next video and we'll do some cool stuff like moving files around, copying, pasting. So this is this is what we do in a user interface as well, right? We, we go inside a folder, we create a new folder sometimes and we copy paste things and move things around. This is what we're going to learn in the next video. So I'll see you then guys, bye. Hey guys, welcome to this video where we learn how to move things around in a terminal. In the last couple of videos, we learned how to navigate in a terminal and we learned uh, the commands PWD, uh, which prints working directory, LS lists item in the current directory or the working directory, CD, which changes directory, MKDIR, which makes a directory. Also, uh, going to a previous directory, you do CD space double dot, it goes to uh, the, the previous directory. If you just type CD and enter, you go all the way back to the user's directory. Now uh, let's improvise on these things and try and learn a couple of new tricks maybe uh, so that our functioning in the terminal is smooth. Our aim again is to reach this directory called testing ground which we created in the last video. So I open my terminal, it's again in the users folder now I want to go in the folder testing ground. Now I know the location of the folder. It's in the folder desktop and then coding and then uh, terminal and then testing ground. So I could do that and I'm, I'm in this folder called testing ground, but I want to do it another way. This is how we did it at the beginning of the last video. I go, I type CD enter, I go all the way back to the uh, home directory or the users directory Manjugupta and now uh, I want to go one by one let's see I have the directory desk I list items I know this directory desktop I want to go into so I type CD desktop so let's let's see a cool cool cooler way a quicker way to do this when you type CD desktop just uh, after I type DES, I press tab, and it automatically prints the rest of everything. Yeah, I never I never write the whole thing. Like if I want to go in this folder documents, who the who who would type such a big name? I write D O C and it prints the rest of the name automatically when I enter tab. So take care of tab guys. Uh, let's say I want to go into applications, I type A P and I enter tab, I, I press tab and it prints the rest of the name automatically. So when you press tab, uh, it'll print the rest of the name of the directory automatically unless there is a clash. So let's see here. There are two folders, two directories uh, that start with the name DO, documents and downloads. 
So I write CD space DO. Now I want to now I want uh, it to do automatic things. Now I enter press tab, and it's kind of confused what to do. So it does nothing. And when you press tab again, it shows me two options, basically two folders that start with DO, and uh, he, the computer doesn't know which one I want. So it displays both and asks me to type, give it more information. Do I want the for to go into a folder? documents if so then i should type c and then print then press tab if i want to go in downloads i should print i should write w and then press tab so basically using tab is interesting it spares you a lot of effort so this is how i would now that you know how to use tab and this is how i would go to the directory called testing ground i write cd de tab prints the whole thing now coding i write cod it has two folders so i write i press tab prints the whole thing now i write t enter tab te enter tab it prints the whole thing terminal then i write te enter tab press tab prints the whole thing enter this is how i would navigate using the tab button pressing the tab button it really helps so now I am in the testing ground folder. Let's go in here. I have two files in it called test file onetxt test file two.txt. I added these files. Uh, let's list them in the terminal ls lists these files. Now I want to move things around. So first to move things around, I create two folders. I create a folder called test one just to see the magic. It appears here test one uh, appeared I write mkdr test two appears so now I want to move the file test one test file one dot txt in test one folder and test file two dot txt in test two folder and let's see how we're going to do that okay so what we do now is we use we move files and how we move files we use the command mv and how do we use the command mv we use mv space name of the file or the folder we want to move right now we're just moving files so mv space the name of the file we want to move space the directory we want to move in so that's uh how it goes basically what it does is mv space name of file slash folder file or folder space name of or basically location so let's try this out let's try moving file uh, i am in the folder testing ground it has two folders two files test file one dot txt my task here is to move this file to the folder test one so let let me let me just first to show you guys what's inside test one there is nothing inside test one okay and then i go back to this directory now i remove test file one.txt into test one folder i use the mv command move then the name of the file which is test file one.txt note that i'm using tabs here and then the location of where i want to put this file in and i want it to go into the folder test one now, when I press enter, it magically disappears only to appear in the folder test one. So this is what move does. It moves a file. So it does not copy paste because copy paste means you leave the file in the original location and create a copy of that file. When you move things, you move them. When you copy paste, you copy paste. So let's let's try and copy paste. Copy paste is really simple. You use the command cp, and everything else remains the same. Name of file and location. Cp name of file location. Mv name of file location. This is how it goes. So let's do it with test file two. I want to copy paste this into the folder test two. 
Now, copy pasting means that it would not magically disappear from this folder. It would remain here, but a copy would be created in test two. Let's check test two out. There's nothing there. Um, I'll check it out in the terminal as well. Uh, CD test two, LS, there's nothing there. Going back, clearing the garbage. So I want to copy paste test file 2.txt in test two folder. And let's try and do that. Copy paste name of file, test file 2.txt in the folder test2. Now enter. Okay, so the test file 2.txt is still here. Let's check out folder test2. Wow, there's there's a file called test file 2.txt there. So it copied and pasted the file so there, there are these are two operations that you do you do uh copying pasting and you do moving another thing that you do is you rename files and when you rename files you rename using the command move itself because when you move things you re re remove something from a particular place and put it in another place so note that renaming is also done using the move command and you can just we can just try it out quickly uh, how we do this is suppose i want to name test file 2 as a new test file and so i do this by uh, typing mv test file 2.txt and i want the name to be new test file.txt let's see what happens the name changes it moved everything inside the file into a new file called new test file now you also can also create create a copy using the cp command of file you type cp new test file the name of the file you want to create a copy of and the name of the new file so this is copy.txt and when you press enter it creates a copy so this was it guys this was we were moving things around in the terminal copying things pasting things moving ourselves around navigating in the terminal and that is it for this video we've, we've reached we've covered some ground we started by knowing nothing about a terminal and now we can navigate ourselves copy paste things do everything that we kind of used to do using the user interface so it's pretty cool and Come back in the next video and we'll learn some more cool things. So until then, bye guys. Hey guys, welcome to this new video where we'll revise what we did in the previous uh, four videos where we introduced ourselves to the terminal and how to navigate around in the terminal and moving things around in the terminal. So let's revise the syntax of a few very important commands that we learned. Uh, PWD, print working directory list, ls is pretty basic. You just enter these, uh, type them and enter. The next uh, important command was change was to change directory. What we do is we type cd space location or cd space name of the folder. So if the folder is in the current directory, you say cd space name of the folder. If the folder is inside another folder in the current directory or even a few levels down, you just write the location of the folder using slashes. If you remember, we did that in the last couple of videos. Going back to the previous directory is cd space double dot. That takes you back to the previous directory. Remember, if you just type cd and enter, it takes you back to the home directory or the user's directory. Now, to make a directory, what you do is you type in mkdir and the name of the directory. That creates a new directory for you. Moving files, the way you move files is mv name of file, mv space name of file, space location. That's how you move a file from the current directory to another folder and location is the location of the folder it can also be the name of the folder if the folder is in the current directory and copying and pasting 
this copies and pastes the file by the name of name of file to a location. Again, the location can be the name of the folder if the folder is in the current directory. If it's further down, which means it's inside a folder which is in the current directory or a few levels down, then you have to put in the location. You can use move files and copy paste to also move a file, uh, rename a file. In that case, uh, the syntax becomes mv name of file before renaming and space name of file after renaming. Copying pasting a file is copy paste name of file, name of original file, and name of the copied file. That's how the syntax works in command line arguments. So this was a quick revision of all that we did. Uh, thank you for watching. And in the next video, we'll be doing something really interesting and uh, we'll be introducing ourselves to the Vim editor. It's an editor present inside the terminal. So do come back. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now. Hey guys, welcome to this video where we'll be introducing ourselves to the Vim editor. It's it's an editor present inside the terminal. So you don't have to go outside the terminal. Uh, editor is more like a notepad kind of thing. You, I'm sure most of you work with notepads. So editor is the same, a similar thing that's present inside the terminal. Vim editor is the editor that's present inside the terminal. Now uh, we do, whenever you open a notepad file, there are three things you do. You create the notepad file or a text file. If you, uh, you create it, then you write things in it, you save it and close it. So these are the three things you do when you use an editor in a in user interface you must have used it in windows at some point and the vim editor is just like any just like the notepad even and what it does is oh, i mean we do the same three things with the vim editor as well we create a file and to create a file using vim editor you use vim space name of file it opens a file with the name name of file then you want to write in the Vim editor. You do that by pressing the I button. If you press the I button, it goes into insert mode or writing mode. And when you're done writing, you save and exit. So the first thing you have to do is you have to come, of the, come out of the writing mode. You do that by pressing escape. And then you type colon WQ and then press enter. So when you press escape, it comes out of the writing mode. Then when you type colon WQ and press enter, it means WQ means, W basically means write or save and Q means to quit. So colon WQ basically means save and quit. So these are the three steps. These are three basic things we'll be doing. Three basic steps we'll be doing every time we use the Vim editor. We create a file, we write in the file and we save and exit the file. So let's let's test it out uh, by ourselves in the terminal. So I'm back again in the folder called testing ground. Uh, it has two folders and one file called test file two dot text txt. Now what I want to do is I want to create a file which is again uh, a text file uh, and or or I think I'll create a C file. I'll write a C code in the Vim editor. And I first have to create a file. I do that by typing Vim and the name of the file. I call the file hello world.c. Now I'm in the Vim editor. This is the Vim editor. Now I have to write. How do I write? I write by going in the insert mode. And the way to go into insert mode is notice what it says here. If I press I, it says insert now, which means now I am in the insert mode. Now I can type in anything. I'll write a very basic C code uh, just because it's, I think it's interesting. Uh, most of the applications of the Vim editors, I mean, the Vim editor is usually used to program 
and or it was created to program in the terminal and that's why probably you will use it in the future as well otherwise there isn't much point in using an editor in the terminal so our program is almost finished this is the c program i wrote just to say hello to the world and now i was still in the writing mode right it says insert here now to exit the file first i have to come out of the writing mode i do that when i press escape when i press escape the insert sign here is gone which means i'm out of the insert mode or the writing mode now to save the file or to close the file I type colon wq. Now it shows here. This basically means the command for the editor because ed the editor does two things. When you op use an editor in the normal uh, user interface, what you do is you provide commands to it by clicking on certain things. Like you click on the icon and a text file opens up. Then you click on the save icon. It saves everything. Then you click on the cross. It closes things so you're providing command commands of open close save things like that to the editor in addition to that you're providing in text as well this is exactly what it does it has one mode called the editor mode uh, informally where you kind of put in the text or data or whatever you want to put in the file and the second mode called the command mode informally i mean these are not the exact modes uh, or what they're called, but basically in this mode you enter the command. So uh, when I type in I, I go in the writing mode. Now when I type, when I press escape, I'm out of the writing mode. Now I'm in the command mode. Now I have to give it a command. And the command I'm giving it is save and exit, which is represented by colon WQ. And then I, when I enter it, it will come out of the file. So uh, notice that there isn't a file called hello world.c created yet, but when I save and exit, so I'll save and exit, and it magically appears. Now to look at this file again, I type vim hello world.c and opens that file. So you can also use w colon q. Colon q means just quit, and this only works if you haven't made any changes. Colon wq means save and quit. So you could use both in this case. So that was it. That was a very small introduction, very brief introduction to the Vim editor. And I hope you enjoyed learning about command line arguments and learning about the terminal. In this in this course, we've tried to introduce, introduce you to the very basics of the terminals, which are mostly enough to get you through a basic programming course so i hope you like the course and i hope uh, to hear uh, feedbacks about the course and i hope you rate it positively thanks for attending the course i hope to see you in another of my courses bye